Television One and Mazda B-Series Utilities proudly present Country Calendar. Saturday morning sport, part of weekend routine for most parents. But in Waitaha Valley, midway between Ross and Hari Hari in South Westland, Saturday's just another work day. When the game's over, Jean Douglas heads back to the rest of her day's work. Jean's a dairy farmer. She works seven days a week, but she's her own boss. She's owned her own farm for 10 years, since she became the first woman to get a farm through the old lands and survey ballot system. When I came here and got a farm in my own right, um, it was nice to actually be able to go to a bank or an organisation like Lands and Survey and be treated as a person in my own right. To me, it's not important as to whether you're a man or a woman as to what kind of job you want to do. Um, it's just if you're capable of doing the job and you like doing it, why shouldn't you? Even before she came to the west coast in the Waitaha Valley, Jean knew she was capable of running a farm herself. She'd been brought up milking on her family's farm and had run a small dairy unit with her first husband. When her marriage ended, she needed a full-time job. She wasn't waving any banners, just getting on with her chosen career. I did get a letter from a women's lib group in Wellington when the news came out that I was the first woman that had got a lands and survey farm on ballot and uh, oh, they were really congratulating me about what a great thing for women's lib this was and they you know, were quite pushy with their letters and what was I going to do next for this great you know, liberation of women and uh, I couldn't resist writing back and saying well actually I've met a man that really suits me and I'm getting married <laughs> they, back, they never contacted me again after that Not only did she marry her neighbour after a whirlwind romance she also had a son Craig is now seven. Jean's husband Rex farms down the road on the same block his grandfather cut from Bush 90 years ago. Fatherhood's brought on a few changes. Rex used to fatten bulls, but when Craig was born, he opted for gentler red deer and calves instead. Some things haven't changed though. Jean and Rex enjoy being independent. They've combined their home, but not their farms. Well, Rex, who's a full coaster, born and bred here, um, he had his own established farm and beef and deer, and I was set up on this place with lands and survey and had a nice mortgage. And I'm sure Rex didn't want my mortgage. <laughs> so we just kept the two units completely separate. It means that Rex runs his farm independently and I run mine independently, and, well, we just keep it as two separate units. Jean's always been her own person and enjoys getting stuck into her farm work. It shows in her results. She's built her milking herd up to 40 cows more than Lands and Survey thought her block of 111 hectares would carry. She ranks in the top three producers in the valley. She doesn't run a herd of numbers, though. 
Jean knows each of her 160 cows by name and believes being affectionate pays off at milking time. Apart from the personal touch, Jean's happy using a conventional dairy system and never too proud to call in help where it's needed. Well, all farmers have their weak spots, um, things they can't do or mm -hmm. they find don't suit their temperament. What are yours? Uh, mostly machinery. <laughs> uh, machinery certainly cuts down the, the manpower that you've got to use the, on the heavy jobs. But I love the animals, but I hate tractors, you know. Oh yes, in theory they start and go when you use them, but oh, they're dirty, smelly, noisy things. and <laughs> I haven't found any way to do without them yet, but I prefer somebody else to do the maintenance on them. As a farmer, Jean doesn't like sheep, but these lambs appeal to her gentler side. They're orphans. Jean's a practical, hard-working farmer, but she also has plenty of TLC to spare for a good cause. School mornings are busy for any mother, but Jean Douglas manages to get her son Craig off to school during smoko. You've been into the chocolate biscuits last night? No. Mm, were. Somebody was. By the time Craig heads off, Jean's been up for two hours and finished the morning milking. Waitaha Valley is linked by only one road, stretching from the coast to the foot of the Alps, 15 kilometres away. It serves a small dairying community that's bound even tighter by having its own school. There's only one class at Waitaha School, and only one teacher too. <laughs> Running a small school on the sparsely populated west coast demands extra commitment from parents. The policies of tomorrow's schools mean everyone in this community has a job at the school. <laughs> The school's board of trustees meets officially each month. Tonight's business is close to home. All right. Well, we've got our pet day coming up. Maybe now well, we should sort of toss a few ideas around anyway and then bring it up again at the next meeting. I'd like to make the suggestion that we bring the pet day forward quite a bit earlier than it has been instead of November into October because now we don't have any big children except Tania. The little ones can't handle these big calves of 12 or 14 weeks. Yeah, it is a good idea. We tried to bring it forward last year, I think, with was it last year, the year before, and met a bit of a brick wall. It's easier to reach agreement when virtually all parents are on the spot. <laughs> There's a strong sense of community in the valley. It's part of the reason Jean loves living here. I find because we're smaller, isolated communities, you get to know all the families and we work together and help each other out. In July, a farmer down at Harry Harry lost part of his boundary fence and didn't realise that the fence had been weakened there and his cows broke out overnight and got into the toot, which is a 
bad poison. It's a native plant, but it causes the cows to die in agony. In the morning when he went to give them their new grass, he found there were 61 dead out of a herd of about 130. So, of course, you know, with having lost that number of cows, it would have sort of financially broken the guy. So a lot of the community have ra rallied round and donated him an in-calf heifer or a cow that they could spare. One cow, you can donate it to a neighbour when something like that happens. After all, it might be us next time. Jean's always there if anyone's in trouble. But at calving time on her own farm, she prefers to stand back and wait to be asked. Jean likes to quote her father saying that when it comes to calving, there's not a lot of difference between a cow and a countess. Mostly, her cows cope without her. Newborn mags is the product of a laboratory love affair, but that doesn't stop the paternal instinct coming out in some onlookers. Sometimes they're tangled up and they're not presented properly. The head's folded back or the um, calf is back to front, like a breech birth, and they need assistance with it. Last year I had a Frisian cow, had a pair of huge, beautiful twin heifers, but they were tangled up and my husband Rex had to untangle them and carve them. In tricky situations, it's handy to have a spare pair of hands. Well, I'm not really strong enough. Also, I've only got short arms, you see, so... <laughs> you need a man with nice long arms to untangle it. <laughs> Things went well this morning, but Jean's not finished yet. There'll be daily deliveries for the next six weeks. Yes, these are the cows that are going to calve in the next oh, four or five days. I've got my two-year-olds, my in-calf heifers, in with them too. They're in the paddocks closest to the house where I can just look out and see who's doing what, so as if there's any chance of calving problems, right. they're um, under observation all the time. But I choose... Jean runs a mixed herd of jerseys, Frisians and everything in between, including the odd dash of Ayrshire and milking shorthorn. Temperament is more important to Jean than breeding. If a rebel appears, she has to be tamed quickly or sent on her way. Uh, they'll kick and they'll jump the yards and uh, try those sort of tricks. I've never had anything that I haven't been able to calm down and milk yet, but I suppose it could happen. Uh, they don't live very long if they're that way inclined. What happens to them? They go to the works. What else can you do with them? If you can't milk them, they're no earthly good to you. Spring milking can bring a few surprises. The odd rebel doesn't want to come back to work after her winter holiday. In a dispute like this in the cow sheep, management has to take a hard line. The milking routine's no chore for Jean. It's a family tradition. Back in Scotland, her grandmother was still milking her family's herd at the age of 89.
Jean's business is doing well. She's producing around 25,000 kilograms of milk fat a year. Occasionally a rebel in the herd needs coaxing for her contribution, but mostly they respond to Jean's touch. I like my milking cows and I'm friends with them. They've still all got their names and their numbers and uh, they get talked to and patted if they, if they want. Getting a job in South Westland is like getting a month without rain. It hardly ever happens. This is a land of terminal unemployment. But Jean Douglas isn't the sort to sit back and watch her community die. She has a few theories about preventative medicine. A year ago, she took on a farm worker. William Woodward, or Woody, had only one qualification for the job, enthusiasm. I think it's an uh, unfortunate thing that so many farmers won't take on young people who haven't got experience and give them some experience, because this is the whole problem now. With unemployment, the papers are full of jobs for experienced people, but where are the kids going to get the jobs, especially in isolated communities like this? Um, what, do you, what are they going to do about it? If, if somebody won't give them the experience, well, they're sort of stuck in a rut for the rest of their life. If I'm going to employ anybody, I would rather take somebody on who doesn't know much about it and train him up to my way of doing things. A lot of people think I'm pretty old fashioned but I get the production and the money and it's the way I like to live. Not only did Jean look for an unqualified worker, she also paid extra to employ a married man with children so the local school would be saved from closing. Training someone does have its rewards. Perhaps I'm a bossy person but I like to have my animals treated my way, quietly, uh, gently. Um, you don't have to hurry things. The work, you know, it gets done. And there's always work on a farm, anyhow. So there's no point in rushing in to rush every job you can get your hands on because there'll always be plenty there when you get finished anyway. Come on, little girls, out of the road. All right. Oh, you want to go, do you? Come on, little Your turn. Come on. Springtime brings extra work. These heifer calves will join Jean's milking herd in two years' time, but they have to be groomed for the job. Horns are a hazard in the milking shed. Jean keeps around 30 of her best heifer calves each year for milking herd replacements. They're taken from their mothers soon after birth and brought into shelter.
This is home for the next three months, till they're ready for grass. In the meantime, breakfast is served in a bucket. Bull calves aren't much use for milking. After separating out half a dozen for beef fattening and two likely lads to be herd bulls, Jean has to sell the rest as bobbies. They're worth more than a bob these days, though. The works pay $42 a head. Spring usually brings rain, but then so do most seasons on the coast. Jean gets almost four metres of rain each year. It pays to be ready for a flood any time. But for Jean, a bit of rain is a small price to pay. For her, coming to the coast was like coming home. Well, I had heard that it was really the land of opportunity, that there was still so much untapped farmland and when I have got down here and experienced it, I just fell in love with it. Well, you've come here married a true coaster. 20 years now you've been living here. Yes. But do you still, do you regard yourself as a true coaster? <laughs> well, I'd like to, but the problem is, you know, really, as far as the, the born and bred coaster is concerned, anybody who has been born and just come into the, va uh, into the area or the valley never becomes a true coaster. You have to be like Rex born here. <laughs> but I suppose that um, I'm a true coaster in the sense that I love it and, well, I hope I leave it better than when I came. <laughs> Country Calendar was proudly presented by Television One and the Mazda B-Series range of utilities.